So last meetup, I talked about uh, how to set up a hybrid app. And so this, uh, this month, I'm just going to be kind of just going over a few of the quirks to come up with uh, when trying to test a hybrid app uh, with Angular and AngularJS. So some of this is applicable to Angular testing as well. Um, but some, it's actually fairly similar in the end, you'll find. So is there anyone that's currently running a hybrid application with Angular and AngularJS? That this would be, OK, well, maybe it will come up. Oh, and uh, the slides, you can see there's a link to them there. Uh, the GitHub repo uh, with the hybrid application I have that's updated with the testability um, is there. We'll send the links out sometime in the future with uh, these. And if you want to contact me, you can always message me on Twitter. So basically, when you're setting up uh, testing with Protractor and Karma, uh, one of the easiest things to do, and it's kind of the same way that you would set up a hybrid application, is just using the Angular CLI. So create a new application in another folder, copy over the needed files that you have, and then you're pretty much most of the way there. Protractor pretty much is set up to, I mean, if you already have your own Protractors set up, it should likely be working just as well, but if you don't have any of this, or you just kind of want to test around with setting up testability for your application, copy those files over, and with Protractor, you don't have to change really anything other than the test that comes with it, because it might not be applicable to your app. And with Karma, you need to um, do a few little steps more. So Protractor, um, there's not really anything extra you need to do, as I said. Uh, one of the caveats is that you can't really leverage the Angular CLI for like initiating the running of your tests. You need to be running your application separately and then run your protractor tests separately. Um, this is likely because you have different things that are going on in your hybrid application that requires kind of a more complicated build process. Uh, I showed last meetup how that we were using Grunt to basically build the Angular, AngularJS app, build the Angular app, and kind of combine the two together to make it all work. And that works fine, so we use that to run it, and then you can just run your protractor test separately against it. Um, so basically, the other thing to know is that like, if protractor is working for your website now, and then you kind of add in the hybrid application, because you're hybrid mode, because you're going to start moving towards Angular, protractor should continue to work. If you, as long as you're adding like the bare minimum of Angular code, it should continue to work from, from my experiences. Usually the things that come up with it not working are actually related to your code and not necessarily Protractor, or it finding things that were not, should not have been working that were. Um, so one of the things that happens, though, when you run the hybrid application is that uh, your, the Zone.js, it monkey patches all of the native JavaScript calls, uh, all the event handlers that, it, that get registered. And so as part of that process, you kind of have some wonky stuff that happened with your digest and angular jest side of things. So uh, once you find, I, in the lot, if you look at the GitHub repo that I posted, I showed kind of one method for fixing that. But once you remove those aspects of the equation, some of those issues should go away. But usually you're, you're, you're always going to have the issue, though, if you have long um, uh, timeouts or long H, uh, HTTP requests within your AngularJS code, uh, Protractor can time out uh, before those happen. So those should always be wrapped in an interval or um, just dealt with separately. Um, if you're upgrading an existing app without Protractor, just make sure it works before upgrading and then upgrade it and then see if it still works. So I'm not going to say this as a blanket statement because I have Craig looking at me that. <laughs> <laughs> Thing another, I, but I've, from my experience, I've, I've uh, now done three different apps that we uh, put into hybrid mode, and Protractor works just fine. We have not had issues. So one thing to note, though, uh, so when you are running Protractor, uh, you're going to have you. One thing that might break Protractor is if you are running a uh, hybrid application and you have in your Bootstrap array in Angular you have a component that's using an upgraded service. So one of the reasons this will break, uh, and it's, it's intermittent. I couldn't reproduce it in my demo app, but this was something that happened at work. And so basically, though, what happens is the app root, uh, so your root app component, that gets bootstrapped. 
After that is finished bootstrapping, then the injector is available. And the injector is the Angular JS injector. So as part of using these upgraded services, you're using the injector to get the service. And the injector might not be available by the time the app is finished bootstrapping. And that can cause a uh, protractor to fail. So keep that in mind if you are using, if you're upgrading services and they're ones that are within your bootstrap array in Angular that you might run into some issues with that. And so I was gonna show real quick a, an example of that. So I have right now, um, this was the application I had that is running fine. So one thing I found that if you, I noticed this because I was trying to run, and of course I don't have, one second. Um, I noticed that when I tried to run battering against uh, my, uh, when I tried to run battering against our hybrid application, that's when I noticed that uh, things were not working as I had intended. So, all right. So this is the exact error here that will happen. So if I, because I have an upgraded service within my within a component that's, being, that's in the bootstrap array in Angular, uh, this error is being triggered. But if I go to a separate page that is not part of the bootstrap process, that then uses that upgraded service, everything works just fine. Right there. The error is specifically uh, cannot get read property git of undefined. And what's undefined is the Angular JS injector. Sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. That's that would have been helpful. <laughs> sorry. It's uh, I, yeah. That's up here, and I'm down here. Uh, I can't. Maybe I can. There we go. Uh, this here. So if you're seeing this error here, cannot get property get of undefined, and you're dealing with upgraded services. Uh, it's likely because the injector is unavailable, and that's because of if it's not part, if it's not something that's in the bootstrap array in your app component, um, it could be another reason. But at least for us, that was the case. So basically, the solution for us is so we just basically had one component that we had that we were bootstrapping that had our router outlet as well as some code that used an upgraded service. Uh, basically, all we did though is we moved the code that used the upgraded service to a separate component. And then we downgraded that component, put that in the entry components array in your app module, and then just use that on the Angular JS side, and everything worked just fine. So let's see if I can successfully navigate back. There we go. Uh, Karma. So Karma requires a little bit more than Protractor in terms of the setup. Uh, Basically, though, it's, it's fairly simple, though, just to get your unit test to run. You, out of the box, when you cop, if, you, if you copy over the Angular CLI config uh, or merge in what's missing from your config that's in that config, uh, it will basically just tell Karma to be aware of the uh, spec files that are in your Angular code. Uh, it will run those. It will also run all the unit. It will basically just run all the spec files it finds and uh, it will just know how to handle them, assuming you have the proper plugins that are needed to run to do the Angular uh, unit testing. So, but basically, you just need to tell where your Angular JS files are, um, which reporter to use, and with the, with Angular, you're going to be using uh, Karma coverage Istanbul. So, one of the things that won't work out of the box is uh, code coverage, and so part of the reason is there's actually a the Karma coverage, uh, which is like one of a fairly common plugin to use with Karma, um, it doesn't use the native APIs for Istanbul, and so it doesn't properly scaffold your code. So I wrote this uh, simple node, uh, simple Karma plugin that will do that for you. So you can throw it in alongside um, the rest of your config, and all the the config I have again is on the GitHub repo. And so if you add this in, you'll get a combined uh, code coverage report, which will basically give you code coverage for both Angular and AngularJS side by side. And so I have that. 
Am I in the right web browser? All right. This is hard to read. Okay. So I can't really see what you can see that well, but uh, you can see here that the app is the AngularJS code and the ng source is the Angular code. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's basically a combined code coverage report for both of them. So if you did run a hybrid app and you ran Karma and you notice the code coverage report doesn't work or it looks like it works but you click the links and the files error out, it's because the code isn't being correctly scaffolded um, with Istanbul. And so here's a basic way of using that plugin. So basically, this is the same as it is in the Angular CLI. Uh, everything's the same. The only thing that's different is you add this preprocessor, which is the coverage Istanbul ES5. Tell it where your JavaScript files are, and it will preprocess them. So. Uh, in my experience, things that you don't need that you think you might uh, after searching on Stack Overflow and Google is wait for Angular. Um, the wait for Angular call happens automatically. Uh, and, it, it, well, here, uh, Protector automatically applies this command before every web driver action. And basically what it does is wait for Angular to be finished loading any outstanding asynchronous calls. Uh, another one is the ng12 hybrid flag. This was something that was in Protractor for a brief amount of time, but it now automatically detects which application you're running. And basically, though, what you need for to be successful with Protractor and a hybrid application is it needs to detect that you're in an Angular JS application. And we have found that everything else is working just fine with our Protractor tests. So uh, another thing to keep in mind is. Um, when you're running the two side by side, uh, you're pretty much testing each one independently of each other as far as unit testing goes. Uh, I, we have not explored at all any sort of functional unit testing where we are testing, you know, of, of doing functional tests between the two. But uh, as far as Protractor goes, where we have those kind of cover our end to end tests of the, you know, things behaving the way that they should normally. Uh, if something is not working, I mean, it could be very well be because of the hybrid application, or maybe it's a bug that wasn't noticed that now is, has come to light because of uh, something else that's going on. But everything that I've found so far has been actually just related to how we were doing things that was incorrect. And one of those things was that uh, Firebase 2, that does not work with Angular. So there's one team that started with Angular and they had a, Fire, with a Firebase application with Angular and then they uh, needed to introduce a, the upgrade module so that they could use one of these AngularJS components and then they added Protractor to it and then things didn't work and then after kind of troubleshooting everything out, it just turns out it's a known issue right now that Firebase 2 will not work with Protractor. And uh, I can link that GitHub issue if anyone is interested um, later. And then basically though, if things aren't working, strip everything down until it does work and then kind of start adding things back in. So if you're, you know, basically just start removing things and that's kind of how I found out it was Firebase. I just started removing all the components that were being added in Angular and once I removed the one that called the Firebase, everything started working. So watch out for false positives um, such as, you know, it's important to you know let people know if you're posting on Stack Overflow or GitHub that you know you are running a hybrid application when you're trying to you're know, having issues with running Protractor or Karma, uh, but know that it's not always going to be necessarily related to that. Um, I found personally that bat is a quick way to see that when I was trying to get Protractor working after uh, things broke with this upgraded service that we we're using, I noticed that Batarang was also not working, uh, which is an old AngularJS plugin which kind of can tell you uh, how often uh, digests are happening. And basically once I got battering working, our protractor test start, started working. Uh, protractor has issues with continuous timeout and HTTP polling, so make sure you wrap them in interval calls. And don't use upgraded services in your bootstrap components. And that's about what I have. So are there any questions related to this? Yep. Silly question. What's an upgrade service? 
so if you have uh, an Angular JS service that you want to use with an Angular, maybe you don't have enough time to rewrite it or whatever, it's basically a way of getting a hold of that, the same instance of that service that's in Angular JS within Angular. You know, since all the services are running as singletons, uh, it will grab that same one. So if you're storing state in there or something. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you.